six I K H. I'm gonna do a little rundown. Make sure our screen capture is working. Okay, I'm gonna do a rundown, uh, and this is cold. I don't read this stuff off of scripts. I have personally programmed uh, just about 700 hotspots. I kind of figured this stuff out. So I'm gonna do a top-down overview of how we send the machines out, and if there's any variance from what you're going to see here, that means the uh, the screens uh, have been uh, opened up and modified in the customer's hands. We leave a lot of the settings on default because they just work. So let me start from the top down. I'll start from control software, MMDVM host. That's the default. You'll see pop up in blue. Simplex mode or simplex node uh, here. That's how we set up all the simplex hotspots. As we come down, here are your selections for the mode. When you're ever you're setting up or when we ship, we send in usually one mode only. Matter of fact, always one mode only. Now that could be DMR, DSTAR, or Yesu Fusion. Uh, we don't do anything in P25 or NXDN. We don't trigger any of the cross modes. And the POSAG we are coming out with, but we don't have that out yet. That's going to be a different setup altogether. So for the basic general hotspots, here we go. 95% are going to send out with the DMR mode set up and the DMR window activated. You'll notice right here, uh, RF hang times. We do not change these. You can change those if you like. We leave them at default. They seem to work just perfectly fine at default. If you have a rugged spot, XD42, you will have an OLED screen. Uh, so here you go. Uh, MMDVM display type, OLED. That'll be your first setting. Port will be modem. Next in layout, which is interesting. They say next in layout. The OLEDs are not next in screens, uh, but the OLED is G4KLX. If you have a next in screen, you'll simply select next in and this setting, ON7LDSL3, that is for the Nextian screen. Nextian, modem doesn't change, ON7LDSL3, that's it. So I'm just going to turn this back, even though it won't matter, because if I just shut this down, it won't save the change. Remember, everything in PyStar, if you make a change, you must initiate the change by pressing Apply Changes. Okay, top down. I don't want this to be boring, but I do want it to be informative. Host name, Pystar. We don't ever change that. Obviously, we're going to put your call sign in here. We're going to put your DMR ID. DMR ID is a requirement for Brandmeister, whether you use it or not. You have to have the DMR ID, which is free from radioid.net. Radio frequency. Obviously, that'll be your frequency. We will put in here for you. We do not change the latitude or longitude. We do not change this. You have to put these in the correct way. And if you don't know, go on, uh, go on uh, Facebook. Uh, do some due diligence. Make sure you put this in correctly. If not, it can and usually will cause problems with Brandmeister and start to hiccup your connection. So make sure you put the latitude and longitude in correctly if you want to do the APRS stuff. I'm not doing it now, so I don't change it. Uh, town locator, again, make sure you put this in correctly. Something wrong here can actually botch up, or I say muck up, uh, the connection between Brandmeister and with the Pi Star. I can't tell you specifically why, but I can specifically tell you it does, and I've seen it happen. I personally don't mess around with this. I'm not doing anything in, uh, in APRS right now anyways. When I do, uh, this is all going to become far more relevant, but for this time, I am not. Country, well, I'm in USA. I leave it at USA. Uh, I will change this, uh, by the way. If it's going out of the country, uh, sometimes it'll slip and I won't, so I apologize. But you guys can you can change this pretty easily uh, with with not much of a chance of uh, making a hiccup in Pi Star. The URL, which is the URL URL that goes to QRZ, is going to be in here automatically when you put these settings in and save them. So you don't have to change that; it will change by itself. Uh, radio modem type for the 
For the jumbo hats that we use, and we do buy them factory direct, we are not buying that garbage on eBay, Alibaba, uh, AliExpress. Uh, they have some great products, by the way. I'm not knocking those guys, as well as Amazon, and they sell hats. But you don't know what you're getting. You're getting uh, seconds, thirds, all types of, uh, of issues can come up with those hats because you don't know where they're coming from. And the first red flag is when you start to see the really bad smudged um, screen printing and there's a reason for that but i'm not going to get into it now it's getting into like stuff we don't need to get into I'm not going to bore anybody to death i just want you to see the basic setting so stm 32.dvm forward slash multimode digital modem underscore hotspot raspberry pi gpio general pin in out that's what they call the pins on the raspberry pi general pins in and out that's the setting right here for our jumbo hats okay node type leave it on private if you have more than one hotspot running switch it over to public why doesn't matter it's just what you do time zone settings well here's all the settings these are a drop down list can't do any damage with a drop down list in pystar dashboard language another drop down list is what if you uh selections here can't do any damage with pystar or communicating with brand meister with that either because it's safe drop down lists are very safe pi changes if they have been made uh, dmr master well let me explain something here to everybody i don't muck with this at all ever and i never have a problem with my pi star and my hotspots ever i never even have a hiccup ever with my setups so i'm just going to show you how we ship them i'm going to show you that this is how we do it here this is proven i've run hot spots for almost two years i don't have any problems except for occasionally an update goes sideways with pi star but that's not a a general basic pi star issue uh directly so i don't change the dmr master ever if you want to you can just remember where the default is brand the brandmeister master okay i only test only test with the USA servers here, which is 301, 302, 303, or 308. That's it. I always ship, if it's in the US, with one of those US-based servers. If it's going to Australia, or Trinidad, or Dubai, Sweden, Switzerland, we, we're in over 27 countries already. I will look on there, and I'll find the one that I can determine is the closest uh, to the QTH of that uh, of that customer, and I will set that. Uh, Brandmeister Network, uh, blah blah blah. I, there's nothing to change there, uh, but it does explain. Go to Brandmeister Self Care. Please read through all of these very very carefully. And again, don't ever forget. On the left side, there's a little drop down that tells you a little bit more information about what these settings do. Okay. Back to, let's get this thing done. Uh, DMR Plus Network, that's not in the USA. I don't do it, I don't use it. If you do something here, make sure you know what you're doing or you can muck up your Pi Star. Uh, XLS Master, I don't change that. XLS Master Enable, I don't change that. Color code, uh, we leave it the default one. As you can see, you can go from one to 15. One's the default, I leave it there. I suggest most people do the same. DMR embed only. This is if you have one of those buggy Chinese radios, and there are a whole lot of buggy Chinese radios. You just click on it, and it changes it. I leave the DMR embed off. I test with a MD, uh, TYT MD380. Works just bueno, and that is a buggy Chinese radio, by the way. And that's why I test it with a buggy Chinese radio, because if I know my little, uh, you know, under $100 DMR radio is getting a clear signal, getting good burr rates, RSSI, etc., etc. I know that just about any other radio on the planet is going to get an even better signal. That's why we test with the lowest denominator radio. There's a reason for that, and that is the reason. Uh, DMR dump, well, here's some more information here. Read it. Um, I leave it on because that seemed to work fine, and I never have an issue. Apply changes if you have made any. Firewall configuration, don't touch it. I don't touch it. I never touch it. Standard, every single machine we send out, standard settings. That's it. Period. I don't muck with them. Because everything works when I don't. 
that's the way I send the machines out. Okay, down here in the wireless configuration, uh, on the PyStar 1, I think I go into this a little bit more, but um, you can do several different things here. Uh, you'll see right now, interface is down. The reason the interface is down, I'm hardwired into my router, which when I'm here at the lab, that's just how I run. I always run them. I just plug the wire in. I always have uh, Cat5 cables all over the place. I plug it in. Good to go. Now, when you have this into Wi-Fi, like a phone, for example, you'll see the connection address. You'll see this Mac, uh, the uh, AP MAC address. Uh, you can get bit rate, signal. You can get all that information here when you are plugged into a Wi-Fi. So that's basically it. Uh, configure, you just push here. You can scan for networks. You can add a network. And then always save and connect. Um, just go slow on this stuff. You can reset your Wi-Fi adapter. Go easy, go slow. Be conscious of what you're doing when you're in this window. Go slow and easy and always save. That's pretty simple. Uh, when I configure these for our customers, uh, this is my Wi-Fi, which I am not on now. Uh, I will just delete that. And then I will do add network, add network, add network to however many the client gives me. I'll put, I'll, I always, we claim we'll put up to three. I will put more in. I can do five or six. I've done up to eight. It's not a big deal, uh, but we do, uh, you know, we do advertise. We'll put three in. So usually that's more than most people need. And then with that said, uh, remote access password, I don't monkey with any of this stuff. I don't touch this stuff. I don't do any remote stuff. If you do, go to the PyStar page. Uh, it's on Facebook and ask them questions. And you should ask PyStar, the PyStar people that created the program and Andy Taylor, uh, any questions you have in PyStar because you've got to figure the, the person that programmed this from scratch is going to know more than anybody else on the planet is going to know about this uh, software, period. You know, a lot more than me, going to know a lot more than just about 99.99999% of the hams you will ever talk to uh, are not going to know all the ins and outs of this PyStar software. They just won't, and I know that for a fact. I hear all the chatter on the nets and all this other stuff. Believe me, this is no man's land to most all hams, except for the front page right here. Now, there are a lot of hams that are very savvy and up to speed on this page, on the config page. That's for sure, right here. Configuration. Okay. Now, there's an expert mode page, and there's a warning here. And it's a good reason, because no one should ever be mucking in this area, ever ever there is one setting in the mmdvm host and that setting is for it's in the modem and that is the offsets with certain with certain radios you may need to change this uh, we set them all at negative 475 these are the specs that we get from the factory. I, I got a call today, and there was an exception where it was reset to negative 350. I won't get into it now. It was with a fusion system, and that can be a valid change. Call me if you have any problems. I will walk you through it. I've got the troubleshooting software for this, which shouldn't be a trouble because I've tested this this thing, uh, you know, to the hill and back before they ship out. But should you have an issue, please call me and do not ever change any other setting in here unless you really you're a techie and you know exactly what you're doing and you know exactly why you're doing it trust me you're only going to create problems and you'll never you're never going to affect a solution mucking around in here you just won't and this is the expert editor section no man's land stay away from it don't get near it. Uh, you can go look at it, but if you don't know exactly what you know these different settings mean, that means you shouldn't be in here mucking with anything in here. So again, the only thing that I do, and this is standard, we have we have a special, a very expensive, expensive replicating machine, and when we replicate, they're all replicated with all the standard settings. They're all replicated with my general settings, so I have to test these units, and with the negative 475 RX offset, negative 475 TX offset, there are some exceptions in certain circumstances with certain radios, and there's a couple other variables. This may have to be tweaked a little bit, but Please don't do that. Please don't touch it without talking to me first. 
Uh, everybody has my number. You have my email. I'm a pretty easy guy to find. So anyways, that is it. I'm going to go back to the config page. I don't want to bore you guys to death, but I just want to give you information that's going to help you. Bobby, KM6IKH, over here at the Next Gen Labs, 73.